Arshalom Hebrews, this is a message from the Israelite Brotherhood. Okay, Hebrews, you know, we know that, you know, during the Babylonian Wars, that we was told by Prophet Jeremiah that we would get a new covenant, not like the one that we got in Egypt. You know, and why would he say that we'll get a new covenant? Why we couldn't continue the old covenant that we broke, you know, just like pick it back up once we find out what was wrong and keep going with it. You know, it was a reason why Almighty Yah said that he'll give us a new covenant. You know, Almighty Yah smarter than his creation. And the reason why Hebrews is some very serious people got the old covenant, the covenant that we broke for Egyptian religion. And being that these peoples are so slick and been had civilization for a long time, that it would cause for a new covenant. And how that we wouldn't be able to just wrestle control of the old covenant from these folks. Because, man, they got years and years of being slick. And how that they tricked us when we come out of Egypt coming into the promised land. And then I'm going to show you, Hebrews, that how the Amorites got our culture and our heritage today on lock uh, along with the uh, Ashkenazi and I'm going to show you Hebrews how they got into our heritage and how they real slick with trying to cover Ashkenazi's heritage up and then how that you know this will cause for a new covenant and then we know in this new covenant you know that almighty y'all give us that, you know, as can be explained in prophecy with our return, that we ain't going to be doing no demigod worship. We ain't going to be doing no animal worship. You know, all those are part of the old covenant. You know what I'm saying? The animal worship. And then, you know, we ain't going to have no Hebrew on Hebrew crimes. And then we most definitely ain't going to have the nostalgic Israelite. And then what I mean by the uh, uh, nostalgic Israelite men, it's them Hebrew Israelites, men, they be dressing up in them old clothes and stuff. You know, them Hebrew Israelites that be putting on them old attires, that them old attires and be walking around like we in the old days and stuff. And then how that we ain't going to have to be the nostalgic Israelite. You know, they got a bunch of nostalgic Israelites. You know them Hebrews walking around with them uh with them old ancient clothes on and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we still in the promised land and uh how that we ain't gonna have to uh function like that. You know, you see them nostalgic Israelites on the corner and stuff with them you know, clothes and stuff on, you know. But how that we ain't gonna have to be you know what I'm saying? The nostalgic Israelite and how that that's connected to the old covenant. You know what I'm saying? And, and then how that Almighty Yah said He gonna give us a new covenant that's gonna be inside us. But let me show you Hebrews why it would take for us to have a new covenant and how it's important for us to have a new covenant is because we abandon our heritage to some very serious people. And, and them very serious people were the uh, Canites, uh, uh, the Canite tribes, the Amorites, and then specifically the Gabonites, but how that they was all Amorites, and then how that the Amorites that was placed in our land from Sipper, the Sepharavims, the Sephardis, they're Amorites too, and they control our heritage right now today. But how did the Amorites get in our heritage way before the Sepharavims did? It's like the Sepharavims were the coup de eight on our head, you know. And it's like when we first got started, man, them folks tricked us, and then they tricked us so slick. And it's like, how did they able to trick us today? over and over and over the same people man i'm talking about the same people tricking us over and over and over you know and then they 
you know, continue to rule over us. You know, they tricked us out of our resources with the civil rights movement, and then they created the organizations, the NAACP, and and, and such to uh, govern the peoples, and, and 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 to keep us, you know, locked into man up under their control. You know, these people, man, been tricking us for a long time, but that trickery go back to the biblical days when we didn't consult almighty Yah with dealing with these people and then how that they had put on some old clothes you know they seen us destroying their relatives and then how they put some old clothes on and some wine old wine bottles you know what I'm saying and then came to us like they just come from a far place and then you know uh oh we became friends with them instead of destroying them you know and then how that they would hang around and then we would make them servants in the temple you know what i'm saying in our place of worship and these are amorites that's the worst thing we could have ever did and, and then the amorites uh uh you know the gabonites the ones that we destroyed would be eventually be called the nathanims and, and the nathanims i got a video man about them and how that they stuck around our heritage and tried to bring some more of their people from Babylon to get in our heritage. But how did, you know, nevertheless, you know, they was there. And how did them folks would, you know, get our heritage, you know, when the exiles were destroyed. You know, that's kind of like a separate history. But I just want to show how, you know, uh, uh, them folks tricked us. And then this would be the reason why it would take a new covenant and why we need a, a, a new covenant because the old covenant you know we won't never have control over because some people that's been controlling civilization for thousands of years before we was even the israelite nation got control of our heritage you know we ran off and abandoned it during the babylonian wars all right let's look at this I mean this would be second samuel's Second Samuel, uh, uh, verse two, and then let's look what it says. And the king called the Gabonites and said it to them. Now the Gabonites were not of the children Israel, but of the remaint of the Amorites. But the remaint of the Amorites and the children of Israel had sworn unto them. And Saul slayed them. You know, King Saul was trying to get rid of them, even though we made a, 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 a pact not to destroy them in the name of Almighty Yah after they had tricked us. And we didn't even go back to Almighty Yah after they tricked us to see if he would still let us destroy him. You know, we didn't do that. And, and, and then, you know, when we was driven out the land by the kindreds, and, and the peoples that's associated with them. I'm going to have to break this history down. And then, you know, maybe you Hebrews that get the understanding of what went on in the past. Even though I got plenty of videos covering, you know what I'm saying, this history. But how Ashkenazi is hidden under the name Scythian. And how he played a major part in driving us up off the land too. You know, even though we know the creator called from the people from the north to uh, come drive us off because we wouldn't stop doing Egyptian religions. But we see how that uh, uh, that them uh, Gabonites are classified as Amorites. You know what I'm saying? So now, you know, I'm going to try to go see if I can reconstruct this story man, about the uh, Gabonites and so forth and how that they had tricked us. And then when they tricked us, you know how we didn't consult Almighty Yah. And did not consult Almighty Yah. It was the worst thing that we could have ever did. Because not, you know, consulting Almighty Yah. And then we let them folks stay, stay around. And then when we was eventually driven out the land. When we was eventually driven out the land. Then them folks got our heritage simple as that you know simple as that them folks got our heritage and we ain't recovered yet 
and we just now waking up t to what's going on and, and thank almighty y'all for the uh for the israelite brotherhood and, and, and you know the studies that you know what i'm saying we put down that we able to see some of this stuff that went on in the past you know we able to see how they tricked us you know let's look at this here look all right so we know that they amorites and, and they really the amorites are the original semitic peoples and mean that they mix up with a whole lot of tribes and all the canite tribes were mixed up with the uh, amorites as well as the uh lot children the mobites and and and, and amon the ammonites you know as well as the edomites too and then i just recently did a video explaining that semitic term but those are the real semitic peoples but look this is joshua 9 and it come to pass when all the kings and then we had come up out of egypt prophet moses and them passed away uh, uh we didn't drive out the canite tribes from the beginning and, and almighty y'all said that them folks will be a thorn in our side and, and and right now today we are in captivity under a canite amorite system that's called western civilization all right this is joshua nan i'm just showing how the trickery went down and how we easily to get tricked because we real quick to befriend other peoples that are not israelites you know we are run up and, and, and bear hug them and, and and they complete strangers and, and and some of them poison and we don't care we just want to just be with everybody we just want to just love everybody and that's just how we've been for the longest and then that destroy us because we can't push almighty Yah agenda loving everybody because almighty Yah didn't love all the tribes that's why come he told us to destroy the amorite canite culture you know if almighty Yah loved it all the peoples on the earth he wouldn't have never told us to destroy the canite culture and i done read off the canite culture sins you know the uh the, the homosexuality the robbing the stealing the killing and most of all the abortions almighty y'all is against abortions back in the days men they throw the kids into the fire straight into the fire and and, and that's like disrespecting almighty y'all's creation when they destroy the children you know they trying to destroy almighty y'all creation and that's what the uh, amorites did and then us being tricked by them, it will have consequences. That's like we was tricked by all the nations. We was tricked by the Egyptians too. And, and the Egyptians tricked us in our last days. But these folks laid the foundation down. The Amorites laid the foundation down for the trickery. And then the Egyptians finished us off. All right. So we know the Amorites, the Gabonites are Amorites also. And it come to pass, this is Joshua 9, and it come to pass when all the kings which were on this side of Jordan in the hills and in the valleys and all the coasts of the great sea over against Lebanon, the Hittite, the Amorite and the Canites and the Prezites and the Havites and the Jebusites heard thereof. Now this is where they at. Now they all around these parts. They over here in these parts. Now we coming out, we... From the, you know, the Almighty Yah gave us from the now to the Ephrates. You know, Almighty Yah gave us from the now to the Ephrates. And this where the Hittites and all them folks was. You know, we know that Edom had mixed up with the Hittites and so forth. And we were supposed to destroy them folks. That's for a good reason why our mother, you know, Rebecca didn't give, a, a, didn't approve of Edom messing with them uh uh with them hittites and so forth because you know that would be destroying the prophecy and the call to destroy the canite tribes that almighty y'all said that you know abraham would inherit the land all right so we see you know what it was over there all right so all right and see that that they gathered themselves together to fight against joshua 
and with Israel with one accord. So it's a trip how all our enemies can get together with one accord and fight against us. But we Israelites can't get together with one accord and fight our enemies. And, and that's why come we've been destroyed. And, 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 and the Tanakh is like a playbook for how we function and how we've been functioning. We identical to the Israelites in the Tanakh now. Our behavior is identical. Our behavior is identical and it's identical to the Israelites in the book of Jeremiah that was driven into Africa that never returned. We are them and how we are wicked and evil just like them Israelites in the book of Jeremiah that was driven out the promised land that caused the transatlantic slave trade. But look, in our evilness and wickedness allow, uh, allow folks to trick us too because if you being evil and wicked, it's easy to pull a trick on you. Look, and, and when the inhabitants of Gabon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and into I, you know, how we marched around and then Almighty Yah made the walls fall, then we got them folks. They did work willingly and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old sacks upon their asses and wine and wine bottles, old and rent, and bound up in old shoes and cloth upon their feet and old garments upon them and all the all the bread of their provisions were dry and moldy. Now that's just like now today, how they able to trick us and make us think that we are friends and how that the Jewish community has just suffered the same sufferings that we suffer. Now we know mysteriously ain't none of them suffered from the transatlantic slave trade and you don't hear about no Jews hollering about how they was on plantations picking cotton. And, and that's another thing why I'm speaking on that Hebrews. It's a lot of Hebrews swapping down that that the Morenos who was dark skinned pig men and I'm gonna start getting some of these pictures on some of these images when I'm talking about these people but you Hebrews should know just from studying with me I got a whole bunch of these images and other videos but how the Morenos were pig men uh, uh, sub hearted Jews that was in Spain and, and then when Eskenazi and them had them expelled through the Catholic Church and how they went over to the Americas. And then after being in the Americas, North and South, they would, you know, have slaves because, you know, they turned they, uh, uh, merchant ships and trading ships, them two-tonning ships into slave ships. And people be saying, where the slave ships go? Why come there's no record of any slave ships anywhere? Them taking everybody. How Foolish can you people be, being that the traders, the merchants, the Randonite merchants had ships that they've been trading in products for for hundreds and hundreds of a thousand years before the transatlantic slave trade started. And how they know how to turn these ships into slave ships and then turn them back into cargo ships. Easy for them to do that. You know, they've been working for ships for a long time, so people are real stupid when they say, where are the slave ships at that brought y'all here to slavery? There isn't any. Like somebody real stupid, it's like pulling that stupid trick that, that, that the Gabonites pulled on us. You know, but anyway, them folks, uh, uh, people will say, ah, it was black slave owners that owned y'all. It was black folks that owned y'all in the slavery days. How about them black pig many folks? Now, they ain't never give a description of where they come from, you know. But how about those pig many peoples that owned the slaves were the Sepharadims, the Sephardis, you know. P Professor Tony Martin document, you know, the, the uh, Jews' participation in the slavery trade and how that some of them, the uh, Sephardi Jews, uh, uh, the Sephardim's gonna have pigmentation, and then they own slaves. And then people say black people own black people own slaves. Y'all own y'all own kind. 
me and you people stupid and y'all been pulling the fast one on us for a long time but it's coming to an end now and then how we ain't going for nothing the enemy say if you believe in any history that the enemy say uh, about Israelite history in the transatlantic slave trade then use a dummy and you just like the people uh, us Israelites that the Gabonites trick you know and then how about that them black slave owners even if they went into the Hebrew female which we know that that would happen because that's a curse and then how that they will have children and then they will make their children uh, a slave owner so now you know people think that black folks own slaves when it was the uh Sip Hardys uh, uh owning the slaves and they had pigmentation and then they would go into the Hebrew woman and have kids and then get their kids slaves and then people walking around thinking black folks own slaves and that's a lie. Not not the not the people from the transatlantic slave trade. You know, we didn't own no slaves. And and then if some did, you got to check their parents and so forth and who they was from. Alright. So we see that the Gabonites, you know, tricked us and let me get back on this and then we see that they Amorites too look and and that how when Joshua went and told their mouth out and in and, and Jericho and uh how they got together to uh come after us and, and then how the the, the Gabonites, you know, tricked us because we was falling up on them. Look, they did work and when the inhabitants of Gabon heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and to I they did work willingly and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old old sacks and upon their asses and wine bottles and old and rent and bound up and made in old shoes and cloth upon their feet, old garments upon them and, and old bread. You know, that's like how they come to us now, acting like the suffering uh, uh, peoples that they done suffer so tragically and now that they on the same level that we on and we know that all they suffering is orchestrated for a, a gain political gain and control look and they went to joshua unto the camp at gilgal and said unto him and to the men of israel we be come from a far country now therefore make a league with us and the men of israel said unto the Havites, you see they Havites too preadventure ye dwell among us and how shall we make a league with you? And they said unto Joshua, We are thy servants. And Joshua said unto them, Who are you? And from when she come? And, and, and they said unto him, From a very far country thy servants are come, because of the name of the Elohim, thy Yah. For we have heard of the fame of him and all that he did in Egypt. So the Amorites know how Almighty Yah dealt with Egypt. And then they know that we was taking their land. You know, they knew everything, you know what I'm saying, that was going on because they was always around us. You know, that's like when Prophet Abraham come into the land, he even saved some of them old Amorites that got, that got robbed by the northern nations. Sodom and Gomorrah got robbed and how Prophet Abraham saved them. You know what I'm saying? So they knew what we was in the land to do. Look. And all they did, let me see, and they said unto him, from, from a very far country thy servants have come because of the name of the Elohim thy servant, thy Yahweh. For we have heard of the fame of him and all that he did in Egypt and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites that were beyond Jordan, to Sihon, king of Hashbon. You see, see Hashbon is going to be, well, Amon, the state, and, 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 and to all king of Bashan which was at Astaroth, wherefore our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spake to us, saying, Take the food and victuals with you for the journey, and go to meet them, and say unto them, We are your servants, therefore now make a league with us. This our bread we took hot for our provisions out of our houses on the day we come forth to go men, men unto you. See, they are trickles and lie. They are trickles and lie. Like they tricked the Hebrews in the past and lied to them, they'll trick us and lie today. The same people that's lied to our people in the past are in control 
over us today and they constantly lie. They have no problem with lying when it comes to saving themselves. And then us Israelites practicing the covenant is a danger to them. So, you know, the folks gonna lie. And and then what's so cold? We made these lying devils a, a part of our heritage by making them work in the temple. That's the worst thing we could have ever did. Because the Gabonites would translate into the Nathanims and them folks would get our heritage when we run into Africa. You know, I got videos explaining this in detail. You know, all right. This our bread we took out from our provision out of our houses on the day we come forth to go unto you. But now behold, it is dry and it is molding. These wine, these bottles of wine which were filled were new and behold, they be rent and these our garments, our shoes are become old by reason of this very long journey. See, them folks are lied to us and, and they've been lying about the transatlantic slave trade too. How they tell us that we all these African nations that never left Africa, that, that, that was in the area during the transatlantic slave trade and still there now. The people from Ghana, Nigeria, all these folks been there doing the transatlantic slave trade. You know, all, and all them there doing the transatlantic slave trade. And then how all these folks, they are doing the transatlantic slave trade and never left. They didn't show you that, you know, that they had their hands in the transatlantic slave trade some kind of way. And we know that the Igaboos are documented as participating in the transatlantic slave trade and how our enemies been trying to connect us to these peoples real bad. I'm talking about desperately trying to connect us to the West Africans and they've been doing it because they are Amorites. You know, our enemies are still Amorites and they're trying to keep us away from our true heritage and they will lie as shown in Tanakh history that they tell lies and I'm going to show you that the Amorites that settled in our land, the Sephardis are the same people as the people that tricked us in the uh, Tanakh when we come out of Egypt, going into the promised land and how did they will stick around and have our heritage. All right. So we see that they said that they didn't come with, with some wine bottles. They got old and their shoes all ragged in toe up and and then they just lived around a corner from us you know and and the men took of their victuals and asked not counsel at the mouth of the Elohim see we didn't ask almighty y'all about them folks and Joshua made peace with them and made a lead with them to let them live and the princes of the congregation swam to them and it come to pass at the end of three days after they had made a lead with them that they heard that they were their neighbors and, and they and and that they dwelt among them. Man, I know the Israelites feel sick. That's like now, man, the people feel real stupid after the uh, uh civil rights and then now how we ain't got nothing and how at first we had a community full of thriving businesses. But then after listening to them folks and following up behind them, how we end up with nothing. You know? So, so them people got a habit of tricking us. It's a habit that go back to the biblical days. Look, and the children of Israel journeyed and came unto the cities on the third day. Now these cities were Gabon and, and Biri and Kitterjan. All right, and the children of Israel smote them not because of the princes of the congregation had sworn unto them by the Elohim Yah of Israel and all the congregation murmured against the princes. Yeah, they were sick. They was mad because they know they've been tricked. But that's like right now in the day, these Hebrew Israelite organizations are tricking the people. And when the people find out that it ain't no Jesus coming to save them and, and, and that we've been on our own for the longest in this captivity and that ain't no God's son watching over us in this captivity and how did this cruel, you know what I'm saying, to trick some folks thinking that a, a God's son and died for your sins and here we sitting here suffering away. You know, we sitting here suffering away. And then how did this, the, the same lies that our enemies will cook up. But we see how that the a congregation 
was sick over, you know what I'm saying, the agreement that they made. But all the princes said unto the congregation, We have sworn unto them by the Elohim, Yah of Israel, and therefore we may not touch them. This will we do to them. We will even let them live, lest we least wrath be upon us because of the oath which we swore unto them. And the princes said unto them, let them live, but let them be hewers of wood and drawers of water unto all the congregation as the princes had promised. Look, all right, so then we made them uh, 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 hewers of stones and, and carriers of the water and stuff, slaves. So that's why them Amorites uh, uh, be quick in wanting to make slaves out of us as soon as we broke covenant and took off. They're going to be looking for us to make slaves out of us, knowing that we enslaved them. And then when they enslaved us, it's going to have far worse consequences because they got thousands of years of governing civilization. And when they lock you down in that, it's hard to get out of it. All right, let's look and, and, and see what this say here. Uh, uh, man, about the Gabonites. The Gabonites. Uh, 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 man, it's a bunch of articles how the Gabonites and, and the Nethinims, them one, them one peoples, the, the Gabonites and the Nethinims become one. And then how the King Solomon uh, uh, would make them uh, servants in the temple. And, and that's the worst thing that we could have ever did was making the Gabonites uh, uh, Nethinim servants in the temple because they are Amorites as I just shown let me read this again how they are Amorites so them being Amorites these men they gonna get our heritage they gonna get our heritage and then they been doing our heritage for the longest oh man did it when we run off it's a wrap it's a wrap on that old covenant. You can hang it up. You can hang it up. And then that was one of the reasons why Almighty Y'all said he'll give us a new covenant. You know, it makes sense. Look, all right. This Samuel 2. And the king called the Gabonites and said unto them, Now, now the Gabonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remainder of the Amorites. But the remain of the Amorites and the children of Israel has sworn unto them. See, the remain of the Amorites. So the Gabonites, you know, that's your Semitic people. They're going to be Semitic. You know what I'm saying? That's where your Semitic come from. The Amorite is the original Semitic. And, and, and when people be hollering that they Semitic, they're going to have some Amorite in them. But but, but you see how the Gabonites, I mean the Gabonites... Uh, uh, in, in, in the Nethinims, look, the Gabonites, res residents of four important cities in the vicinity of Jerusalem, feared that they might share the same fate of Jericho and I, which were destroyed by the Israelites, tricked Joshua into a treaty that would spare them. You know what I'm saying? We just finished reading that. And, and, but the but the Gabonites, you know what I'm saying, would, would, would be with the... Uh, with the Nethinims during Solomon time and, and then how that they would become one and, and then them becoming one you know what I'm saying there was no good thing and then how King David you know gave up you know his wife that was supposed to be his wife one of Saul's uh, uh, daughters and, and then she had a husband and, and, and then how Saul had gave her to another man instead of King David and, and and then they had kids and King David would give their kids to the Zebanites because we had made a, a treaty with a little look the Bible itself also offer indications of operation against many modern scholars consider that such was the status of, of, of the Nethinim and, you know what I'm saying but, but the Nethinims and, and the Gabonites were the same and we let them into the temple and then when we let them into the temple that's the worst thing we could have ever did. That's that. That's the worst thing we could have ever did because in, in uh, uh, 722 BC, some more Amorites, some more Amorites would pull up. You know, some more Amorites would pull up. The Amorites from Sepharvim, from Sipper. You know what I'm saying? Those are the uh, uh, Sepharvims today. 
the Sephardi Jews, they are Amorites, and then they was placed in Samaria. And then when we run off into Africa during the Babylonian Wars, they Amorites. They going to mix in with their people. You know, the Amorites mix in and mix. And, and then them mixing in with the other Amorites that was already in the temple, the Gabonites who were Amorites. Then that's a wrap on our old heritage. That's a wrap. It is over with. And that would be one of the reasons Almighty Yah would, you know, calls for a new covenant. Because the peoples that we wasn't supposed to let have our heritage would end up with it. You know, that's ironic how Almighty Yah tell us to destroy the Canaanite in the Amorite culture. And then the Canaanite Amorite culture end up with the Israelite heritage. Now, it's a known fact, and I've shown over and over how that the Sepharavines from Sipper are Amorites. It's easy to find out that the Amorites are the founders of Babylon. Those people that's founded, being up under the Babylonians, are, are Amorites. Maybe I'm talking about you just can't get around it. And the Sepharavims is the Hebrew word for Sephardi, Sepharadim, and Sepharadim. They're Canaanites. It's just that they lived in the Mesopotamia area. And we was told to get rid of the Canaanites from the Nile all the way to the uh, Euphrates. You know, from the Nile into the Euphrates. So them folks was, them Amorites was within their heritage. And, and then if, if, if they inside their heritage, then, you know, when they get placed in another part of their heritage and then do our heritage, and I can show that the uh, Sepharavims did our heritage during the Assyrian times. So those are Amorites that's doing our heritage. You know, I'm going to look at Ashkenazi too, but, but let's look at this. So we know that the people, that these are Amorites right here. All right, when, when you go to 2 Kings, Chapter 17, verse 24. So these are going to be some Amorites. In the king of Assyria, the second king, chapter 17, verse 24. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon and from Cuddle and from Abel and from Hamab and from Sepharavim and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. So then these folks are doing an Israelite heritage as you read. You know, they doing what they doing in the northern kingdom and then mixing it with their Babylonian tradition. You know, as they do today, that's where Judaism come from. Uh, Babylonian uh, uh, mixing it with the, the, the Amorite Babylonian tradition, mixing it with the Israelite tradition. And then that's Judaism. And then how did them folks would do our heritage them folks this place and those are Amorites so they in our heritage right there this would cause for a new covenant we would call you know what I'm saying we would need a new covenant you know we would need a new covenant and, and then that's why Almighty Yah said during the Babylonian wars when we was chased out the land that we would get a new covenant so we see them people doing our heritage and, and they from Babylon and them gonna be the people that's kin to the Gabonites. So are they in our heritage. Let's go to Second Chronicles 30. Second Chronicles 30 under King Hezekiah. And then it's also showed that it wasn't no ten lost tribes. But this is in 715 BC. They would have been in our heritage seven years when when they come to the Passover dinner under King Hezekiah. This is Second Chronicles uh, uh, 30 chapter 30 verse 26 so there let me see second chronicles chapter 30 verse 25 and all the congregation of judah and the priests and the Levites, and all the congregation that come out of israel and the strangers those are the strangers that was placed in samaria by the king of assyria them amorites that come out of the land of israel that dwelled in Judah rejoiced. They come to a Passover dinner that King Hezekiah had called for the uh, for the tribes of Israel trying to get us together. So you see that them folks in our heritage right there, that would cause for a new covenant right there. That would cause for a new covenant. And, and then, now, I mean, let's look at 
Ashkenazi, how they come into the Israelite heritage. Ashkenazi come into the Israelite heritage under the name Scythian. You know, un, un, under the name Scythian. You know, that's how Ashkenazi come into our heritage. And Ashkenazi came from around these parts. Men around these parts. And then they would take over Chaldea. You know, the, the Scythians is Ashkenazi name in history. And, and how that they been hiding their name too. And I got history showing that during the Babylonian Wars, when they chased us out the promised land, that, that they had took over the whole Palestine. Now, if some Scythians take over the whole Palestine, then where would they go? Guess where they went? They settled in the Scythopolis in ancient Beth Shane. Ancient Beth Shane, a spot where, 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 where them Gibbonites and them folks killed King Saul and hung them on the wall. Where, where, them, where them folks uh, settled in Beth Shane. And, and Beth Shane is, 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 is Scythopolis. All right, let's read a little of this here. You know, uh, man, about the Chaldeans. All right, the the background to the Chaldeans. The Chaldean might have been history's biggest opportunists and most brilliant diplomats, which was good for them because they were never a military power. Yeah, yes, they was. They chased us in Africa. You know what I'm saying? And we were scared of them because they had Scythians with them. You know, the Scythian nation, the, the Scythian Ashkenazi had took over the, the Chaldeans, you know. And then, you know, they'll try to say that they started from a, a mixed people. But we know in the book uh, of Isaiah, he tell you that the Assyrians are the founders of uh, a Chaldea. Man, we can't never trust our enemies on history because they tell lies. You know, you have to take their history and then... You know, uh, uh, read between the lines, you know, and then, you know, if you got biblical history, then you can see clearly through, you know, the lies that our enemies been telling. If you understand Tanakh history, look, the Chaldeans might have been the history's biggest opportunities and most brilliant diplomats, which were a good for them because they were never military power. The Chaldeans, a semantic sneaky people. Uh, migrated to Mesopotamian region next to the Persian Gulf between 940 and 855 BC. We don't know if they conquered anyone who was already there, but we can be certain they established a kingdom for the first time in the history. The Chaldeans were conquered by the Assyrian Empire in 851 BC. But 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 but, but the thing is, men the Chaldeans were controlled by Ashkenazi. You know what I'm saying? The Scythians. You know what I'm saying? That's like this dude right here. I'll kind of give it up a little bit. Let me see if I can find this dude article. Mean about how did uh, Ashkenazi took over Chaldea. You know, it's like I told you that Ashkenazi, the Scythians come from right over here. And they destroyed Assyria. You know, they would go down and get the media and, and, and lamb, and they would rob and, and steal and kill, and then they would help Assyria rob them folks. And then they'll go back and get them folks to go destroy Assyria. You know, I got, you know, information, you know, about this uh, uh, showing, you know, how that uh, Prophet Jonah, you know what I'm saying, was there. All right, that's not it. Let's see. All right, we're going to find it. We're going to find it. We're going to show that the, uh, that the Scythians, that the Scythians, uh, uh, in Ashkenazi, uh, uh, the Scythians and Ashkenazi are the same people, and then how did they control Chaldea? You know, they control Chaldea, and this is what this, you know what I'm saying, professor said, you know what I'm saying, about these, Men historians back in the past, you know, he was quoting, he's quoting uh, uh, classic historians, how Justin is the nation of the Scythians were always regarded as a very ancient, though there was long a dispute between them and the Egyptians concerning the 
and antiquity of their respective races. Tigerus Pompeius, the Scythians possessed the land of Chaldea, Mesopotamia, for 1500 years before any other nation, and they are the oldest people of the earth, varying even the Egyptians and ancestors. All right, man, I got some, uh, in, in history, they showing how the uh, Scythians made it, you know, all the way up into Egypt. Now, we know that when we Israelites was driven out the promised land during the Babylonian Wars, that, the, that it was the Scythians, you know, that it was the Scythians you know what I'm saying? It chased us out. And, and that they chased us, you know what I'm saying, into uh, Africa by way of Egypt. And then how did we was tricked into e Egyptian worship. You know what I'm saying? That's like I got these Egyptian images. Man, I got these Egyptian images right here because, you know, this is the 12th dynasty and so forth. And this would've, these would have been the pharaohs in, in, uh, about the time that we was in Egypt and then how uh, uh, Joseph, you know what I'm saying, was in Egypt, you know what I'm saying, and how, you know, and if you look at all these statues from Middle Kingdom, man, the enemies done broke off all they nose and, and man, they got all they nose broke off and chipped off and stuff, and, and then that's because that these people would have an association with us Israelites, and then these Folks would trick us too, you know, because how Joseph man was given Aseneth, you know what I'm saying, the priest of our own daughter, and then how that they would trick us, and then how that them Egyptians left with us, and then how we would sin in our last days, which would cause Eskenazi to chase us up off the land, you know, that was Almighty Yah call for them folks to chase us up off the land, and then if you go to uh. Jeremiah, let's see, that'll be the first book of Jeremiah, you know, where Almighty Yah telling him to go tell the nations from the north, and then that's going to be Eskenazi, alright, let me see, then, alright, alright, and it shall, let me see, then the Elohim said unto me, out of the north, this is Jeremiah 1, then the Elohim said unto me, Out of the north an evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. For lo, I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the north, said the Elohim, and they shall come, and they shall set every one his throne at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem, and against all the walls thereof round about, and against all the cities of Jerusalem. And, and they shall set their thrones at the gate of Jerusalem, because Ashkenazi is in the Israelite heritage, and then Prophet, uh, uh, our father, Prophet Noah, had already said that Ashkenazi would get into our heritage. You know, Ashkenazi is a representation of Japheth. And then if you go to uh, uh, Genesis, uh, Genesis, that would be Genesis 9.27, and it says, Y'all shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. You know, and Canaan being Japheth's servant, translating to the the uh, the Amorites, the uh, Sepharvim Jews who have become servants to Ashkenazi. You know, I read over and over how Ashkenazi you know, took over the uh, Jewish way and, and how Ashkenazi controlled the Jewish car now, you know, so what Prophet Noah has said come to pass. And then Ashkenazi would be in our heritage. Look, the Sephardic ideal has always been understood in terms of political moderation and community union. Rarely did the Sephardic lose their eternal coercion, that is, until the process of cultural erosion set in following the Ashkenazi leave. Sephardic abandoned their traditional culture and adapted to the fractitious Ashkenazi model under the rubric of a single Jewish nation. In the Sephardi particular with its culture, genius, and sophisticated social morals has become a lost value. The Ashkenazi culture with its deeply unsettled relationship to the larger world has now become the Jewish standard. So Prophet 
and, and then those are Amorites, the Sibherdim, Sibherdim of Amorites, and how Ashkenazi it, it represent the uh, Japhet uh, house. And you see what Prophet Noah said that how the uh, uh, Japhet would live in Shem's house, that we the Israelites, and he showed in our house. And Yah shall enlarge Japhet, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And that's just the way it was. And that's just how it is when you break it all down. It's amazing how the prophecies come true and come to pass. Man, it, it, it's amazing. Let's let you know that you're dealing with Almighty Yah. And that would be one of the reasons why our enemies wouldn't want us to come into a heritage. And why they would constantly lie. You know what I'm saying? On our heritage. You know, like I say, you know, that's why. It will cause for a new covenant because if the people got our old covenant and then they constantly lie, did Almighty Yah smart enough to just say, hey, let's make them a new covenant. Let's make my children a new covenant. And, and, and then that's what Almighty Yah said right here. If you go to Jeremiah 31, like I say, during this time that he told us this, we was getting beat up. We, uh, we, we was being chased out the land. Because we was animal, you know what I'm saying? We, we was functioning like some animals. We was robbing, stealing, and killing, and, and, and we was terrible. And and Almighty I said this above all that. Behold, the days come, said the Elohim, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them. This said the Elohim, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Elohim. I will put my law in their inward parts, and I will write it in their heart, and I will be their Yah, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Elohim, for they shall know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. But you see it say, But, but they shall teach them. I will put my law in their inward parts and I will write it in their hearts, meaning that we ain't got to have no temple or, or no books to worship. Almighty Yah no more and, and how we just gonna love Almighty Yah from inside us and that's gonna be something that the enemies can't manipulate and control. If the law is inside you and you love Almighty Yah from the inside, then the enemies can't trick you. You know, you can't be tricked. <clears throat> you can't be tricked. All right, Hebrews, I'm gonna sum this up. You know, like I say, you know, it would cause for a new covenant because our enemies got the old covenant. And, and I show you how that the Gabonites were Amorites. And then we know that the Sepharvims from the, uh, Babylon who got control of our heritage and dominated today are Amorites. And how that they would mix with the other uh, uh, Amorites that we didn't destroy. The Gabonites and all the other peoples. And then how our heritage been lost long time ago, man, before we even got settled in the promised land, man. And, and then by the time we get settled in the promised land, and, and then being on Egyptian religion, and then was driven out, then, man, our enemies going to have our heritage, and it's locked. And, and then that's what they did. You know, it's easy to see that's some cold mess. How you can see that mess today. You can see that mess clear today. How they got our heritage and then what happened to us and why we messed up. You know, this is a message from the Israelite Brotherhood. Ain't no other organizations showing the history that the Israelite Brotherhood is showing. You know, ain't no other organization showing the history the Israelite Brotherhood is showing. <clears throat> I pray to Almighty Yah that one of these days, man, before long, I can get the headquarters and then we can get some real studying in and then we can bring all the Israelites together from studying uh, uh, through the uh, TV in, in the chat rooms and how we're going to be doing a whole bunch of that 
and, and, and then how we're going to try to get the Israelites to come together under one history. And once we see what happened to us, then it'll be easily for us to function. Them, and then we'll know what not to do and what to do. And we know that we can't trust nobody when it comes to explaining our heritage, especially the Israelites that's using history outside the Tanakh. They're going to be using those Jewish books, the ones that, you know, our enemies created. You know, all right, Hebrews, this is a message from the Israelite Brotherhood. I want to see if I can get some more in about Ashkenazi chasing us into, uh, chasing us into, uh, Egypt. You know what I'm saying? They was with the Chaldeans. There ain't no question about that. They was with the Chaldeans. And, uh, man, I'm going to just, you know gone and closed out here but we see that you know a new covenant is needed and, and then we're in the process of doing that and then within this new covenant ain't gonna be no man ain't gonna be no a uh, demigod worship that that's that jesus worship that that god's son worship that come from egypt that is horse worship we don't need no animal sacrifices you know what i'm saying no hebrew on hebrew crimes and the nostalgic Hebrew is walking around with all that old stuff on, thinking that, you know, he reminiscing of the past. Man, let's see what nostalgic mean. Man, I think I even got that up here. Let's see what nostalgic mean. And, and then that would be them Hebrews walking around with them with them outfits on. You know, man, man nostalgic it, it is going to be a, a wishful yearning for happier in formal days, you know, uh, that's what nostalgic mean, and that's we got nostalgic Israelites that be walking around with all them old clothes on and stuff, thinking that they in the ancient days and stuff, and then how that they, you know, ain't experiencing or are exhibiting nostalgia, a sentiment of wishful yearning for the happiness felt in a formal place, time, or situation, and then that be them Hebrews. Walking around, you know, you know what I'm saying, with them clothes on, uh, uh, with them space clothes on, uh, uh, Power Ranger clothes on, uh, uh, thinking that they doing something with them clothes on and, and, and not knowing that it's about the uh, the history, understanding the history. It ain't what you wear. It ain't what you put on. Man, man it's what you put inside. All right, Hebrews, this is a message. From the Israelite Brotherhood, you know, we need a new covenant. You know what I'm saying? We got to have a new covenant. It ain't nothing but us having control and setting the uh, standards of how we're going to worship Almighty Yah. And, 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 and it's simple. We ain't going to need no temples or uh, none of that stuff. We're just going to need to pray to Almighty Yah. You know, it's that simple. All right, Hebrews, this is a message from the Israelite Brotherhood. We see how the Gabonites are Amorites. In, in the Nethanims, and then how that you know they would eventually get our heritage when we ran out, you know, the promised land into Africa. Let me show that you know how we ran out the promised land. Go to uh, second, second Kings, second Kings, verse 25, verse 26. This is during the Babylonian wars, and all the people, both small and great, and the captains of the armies arose and came to Egypt. For they were afraid of the Chaldees. The Chaldees is going to be Ashkenazi, the Scythians. You know, the Scythians was with the Chaldeans, made up the Chaldean army. They destroyed Assyria, what's called the destruction of Assyria, 612 B.C. You're going to see the Scythians made up the Chaldean army. And then I had some history showing that how did they conquer the whole promised land, the Scythians, and how this is in history. And, and then how that they had the borders all the way up to Egypt. Now, if the Scythians ain't nothing but Ashkenazi, if they conquered the promised land, then there it is. That's how that they got in. And then some Hebrews be thinking that the uh, that the uh, Caucasians uh, got into our heritage under the Khazars. You know, I'm gonna have to do a video about that, explaining how the Khazars are latecomers in the Israelite heritage and then how Ashkenazi been in our heritage man since the BC days since the Babylonian wars and how this one of the quietest kept history on the face of this earth too along with the Sebhardi 
history and how that they don't be want to tell nobody that that when they come into the Israelite heritage and then and, and that's like you know they real slick with telling folks how they got the Israelite heritage you know but Eskenazi come in with the Skintians under the name Skintian and they settled in Scythopolis they settled in Scythopolis and what would be called the Discopolis cities this is what Eskenazi settled at and then they ain't gonna be too quick to tell you that they ain't gonna be too quick to tell you that. And in that city was called ancient Beth Shane. We never really had control of it. And then Ashkenazi was settled there and they would control the whole Discopolis cities. And, and that's what Jesus hung out with them. And Jesus would, you know, kick it with these folks right here. And then when they explaining the history, Israelite history, they don't never talk about these folks. They don't never talk about how they got in the promised land and so forth. They don't never tell you that Ashkenazi name is Scythian in history. Just like they don't tell you that the Sephardis are Amorites from Babylon and how did they settled in our land and, and merged in with their people, the Gabonites and the Nethanims who were Amorites too and how did they would get our heritage. All right, Hebrews is a message from the Israelite Brotherhood. We, we're going to get it together, Hebrews. We're going to get it together.